Dear students, now we are going to discuss two cavity klystron amplifier and its applications in detail. Two cavity klystron amplifier is a low power microwave amplifier. It is a velocity modulated tube which consists of two cavities, buncher cavity and catcher cavity. These two cavities are resonant cavities. Okay, so hence it is called as two cavity klystron amplifier. The operation is based on velocity modulation concept. That's why we can mention that as velocity modulated tube. Okay. So next, this is the diagram of two cavity klystron amplifier. It consists of an electron gun from this cathode, accelerating anode, which are given the negative potential. Okay. Then the buncher cavity. We are going to give the input signal, RF input signal, which is to be amplified in this cavity. Okay. The next one is catcher cavity. From there, we can take the output. That is the amplified RF output signal. The space between these two cavities is known as drift space. The space is very, very important. It is denoted as capital L. Okay. There is a collector at the end of this tube which is highly positive potential to receive the electrons from this catcher cavity. So this is the overall diagram of this two cavity klystron amplifier. Next we are going to discuss the working principle of this klystron amplifier. This electron gun emits an electron beam. It travels through this tube. So whenever the electron beam reaches this accelerating anode, it produces high velocity electron beam towards this cavity. Okay, so that is the first step. The next one important operation here is bunching process. So it can be done by using this buncher cavity. In this buncher cavity, we are giving the input signal that is the RF input signal. It is a sinusoidal signal, right? So whichever electrons crossing the positive half cycle of this RF signal will be accelerated that is velocity is increased. So those electrons are fastly moving with high velocity. Whichever electrons crossing the negative half cycle those will be decelerated that means the velocity is decreased those are slowly moving towards this drift space okay. Whichever electrons are crossing zero or a field, there is no change in that velocity. So those electrons are moving with the same velocity. There is no change in the velocity. So that is called as velocity modulation. Velocity modulated electrons are bunched together gradually while traveling down this drift space. So I told you the spacing is very very important in this two cavity klystron amplifier. So the bunching process occurs in this space. Okay. So when this modulated electron beam passing through this cavity, it accelerates the RF signal because the level of the excitation of this catcher cavity is greater than this buncher cavity. Okay. So amplification takes place by transferring the kinetic energy of this bunch D electrons to the catcher cavity field. So by that way we can take that amplified RF signal as output. So the remaining electrons can be collected by this collector. Okay. Do you all understand the working principle of klystron amplifier? Electron gun emits an electron beam. This accelerating anode increases the velocity of this electron beam. Then the puncture cavity. So here we are giving that RF input signal. That is the sinusoidal signal which is to be amplified. In this cavity bunching process occurs. Okay. So here the drift space is important because in this space the bunched electrons are moving towards this catcher cavity. Okay. So in this cavity, the amplification process takes place by transferring the kinetic energy from that bunch of electrons into that RF field. Okay. So this is the overall working principle. So this is the apple gate diagram which represents the 
bunching process okay so consider this is the bunching cavity so in this one this one is the negative sign okay so bunching cavity starting from this point electron gun is here okay so in this direction so this one is the positive this one is the negative do you all understand so electrons are coming towards this direction so this one is positive this one is negative with respect to this buncher cavity so whichever electrons causing this negative half cycle those will be decelerated that means velocity is reduced whichever electrons are crossing this zero field there is no change in its velocity so whichever electrons crossing this positive half cycle the velocity is increased so those are moving very faster so this is the drift space okay so at one point in this drift space all three velocity modulated electrons are bunched together okay so those bunched electrons are moving towards this catcher cavity from this bunched electrons the kinetic energy is transferred into that rf field okay so this is how the amplification process takes place do you all understand this is let's take a overview of this working principle of klystron amplifier cathode emits an electron beam this electron beam reaches the accelerating anode which produces a high velocity electron beam electron beam is having negative potential this anode is also given the negative potential so both will be repelled each other hence the electron beam moves with high velocity the input rf signal excites the buncher cavity with a coupling loop we have already discussed the cavity excitation methods in the previous lecture video right there are three important processes involved bunching process velocity modulation and finally catcher cavity energy transformation okay bunching process the electrons which encounter the positive half cycle will be accelerated that is velocity is increased the electrons which encounter the negative half cycle will be decelerated that is velocity is decreased okay the electrons which pass through zero or a fill will travel with original velocity there is no change in the velocity okay as a result the velocity modulated electrons are bunched together gradually while traveling down the drift space so here the drift space is nothing but the space between the puncher cavity and catcher cavity as we know that the variation in electron velocity in the drift space is known as velocity modulation okay so when this modulated electron beam passing through the catcher cavity it accelerates the rf signal because the level of excitation of the second cavity that is the catcher cavity is greater than the buncher cavity so amplification takes place by transferring the kinetic energy from the electrons that is bunched electrons to the field of catcher cavity so we can get the amplified rf output at the catcher cavity finally the electrons with reduced velocity can be collected by the collector which is highly positive potential okay so next one is the equivalent circuit of this output cavity so here it is having three resistances in parallel the first one is rsh out so here sh represents shunt resistance okay so here out represents the catcher cavity it is the resistance of catcher cavity next we are having beam loading resistance okay so here it is representing the electron beam loading resistance value next one is rl that is external load resistance okay so this all resistances can be combined together as rhs that is total equivalent shunt resistance of the output cavity this is the equivalent circuit of catcher cavity okay so next we are going to discuss the mathematical analysis of this two cavity klystron amplifier so initially the electron gun emits an electron beam with uniform velocity the uniform velocity of this electron beam which is accelerated by high dc beam voltage that is by accelerating anode grid okay so that is represented as small v not is equal to square root of 2 into e v not divided by m its value is 0.593 into 10 to the power of 6 square root of capital v not this its unit is meter per second this v not value can be varied based on that application okay so next one is 
the gap voltage between the buncher grids it should be vs v1 sin omega t v1 is nothing but the voltage at that initial stage average transit time through the buncher cavity gap distance d okay so this is the gap of this buncher cavity so it is represented as d okay so that can be represented as so dou is equal to d by small v not v not is nothing but the uniform velocity of the electron beam here so here transit time is equal to distance by velocity that can also be measured by t1 minus t0 okay so the final time minus the initial time period this is the average transit time of an electron beam through the buncher cavity gap distance next one is average gap transit angle so that is represented as theta g this can be obtained by multiplying the angular frequency with the transit time so omega into dou here dou can be replaced by t1 minus t0 that can also be replaced by d by v not okay so next one is beam coupling coefficient of the input cavity that is represented as beta i is equal to sin theta g by 2 divided by theta g by 2 okay so next one is depth of velocity modulation that can be obtained by using this beam coupling coefficient beta i v1 by v0 okay that is the voltage levels here equation of velocity modulation is v of t1 it is a time varying velocity modulation so v of t1 is equal to v naught into 1 plus the depth of velocity modulation beta i v1 by 2 v naught sine omega t naught plus theta g by 2 okay the maximum velocity can be obtained as v naught into 1 plus beta i v1 by 2 v naught the minimum velocity is equal to v naught into 1 minus beta i v1 by 2 v naught so here that velocity depends on the depth of velocity modulation as well as the uniform velocity of the electron beam okay so next the bunching parameter it is very important parameter it is represented as x is equal to beta i v1 divided by 2 v naught into theta naught okay that is the initial transit angle the bunched beam current at the buncher cavity initial stages i2 that is equal to i naught plus summation n is equal to 1 to infinity 2 into i naught j n into n x cos n omega of t2 minus w minus capital t naught here this j n represents Bessel's function the optimum distance at which the maximum fundamental ac current is excited is denoted as l opt so that is equal to 3.682 v0 small v0 that is the velocity initial velocity and then the initial voltage divided by omega into beta i v1 so here this beta i is the beam coupling coefficient okay so the next one is output power for this Clayston amplifier is represented as p out that is equal to beta 0 i2 v2 divided by 2 here this v2 is the catcher cavity voltage so here i2 is the benched beam ac current okay so next one is efficiency of this Clayston amplifier it is the ratio of rf output power to the dc input beam power so b out by p in that is equal to beta naught i2 v2 divided by 2 into naught v naught okay so the maximum efficiency is 58.2 percentage for this Clayston amplifier then the voltage gain it is represented as av is equal to the ratio of output voltage to that input voltage that is equal to gm into rsh that is maximum conductance of the cavity and the shunt equivalent resistance of the output cavity okay finally the output of this Clayston amplifier it is used as low power microwave amplifier in troposphere scatter transmitters it is used in UHF TV transmitters radar transmitters and satellite communication ground stations okay these are the major applications of this Clayston amplifier